Well, it seems that you have a, a love for animals then. Is that something that's been like a long felt thing or? Yes, for sure. Yeah, I, I really do love all things animals and nature. Actually, like I have, <laughs> I have my dog sitting in yeah. my lap right now. <laughs> this hey, is Bob. Atlas. Atlas. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, he's, he's sleepy, but yeah, he was, <laughs> he just kind of like, he came up to me and, and was like, hold me. And I was like, yeah, we'll do yeah. that. <laughs> That's what they do. I love it. What kind of dog is Atlas? Yeah. He's a Shih Tzu. Uh-huh. Yeah, like, a, yeah, it's like a very incredible dog. Can highly recommend this breed. They're just super smart and actually really athletic and very good company. Yeah. I do say so myself. Yeah. I love smart dogs. It's just like awesome when you feel like you can yeah. actually talk to them and they know what you're saying a little bit. It's true. <laughs> yeah. He looks you in the eyes like when you talk, you know, and you're, you're just like, you get me. I know yeah. this. I feel it. <laughs> Well, it's great to have pets. Exactly. I was about to say, it's great to have pets, especially now. So it's a great time to have that. Well, I mean, it's interesting because like when I first was introduced to you, it was a song about an animal in theory, right? Oh, great. Okay. So the first song I heard was Wolf Song. So it's, I guess it's only fitting that we go, we start the animal route. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I'm okay with that. I'm okay with being associated with the animals. Yeah. So I'm, I, I understand that there's quite a story behind Wolf Song. Um, and yeah. in particular, I mean, I guess it, it, it really shows how, uh, how truly how investigative you are with animals. So I'd love to hear, or maybe you could tell everybody else a little bit about that story. Sure. I was touring with my previous band, the Mulligan Brothers in Colorado. We were doing uh, like just a series of shows out there. And we ended up staying with this guy, we call him uncle Bob and on our day off, he takes us to a wolf sanctuary, which I've never been to a wolf sanctuary, you know? So we have to take this really long winding road to get out there and it's dusty in the mountains. And we, so we get there and it's just miles and miles of property and all these incredible wolves that live there. They've been rescued from all kinds of different situations. And the team and like the faculty and volunteers, they're just amazing what they do with the property and the animals out there. But I actually took my violin because I thought we, you know, we talked about it and would the wolves really, you know, maybe like to hear violin? That would be cool. So the owner was totally into it. He's on board. He's like, yeah, sometimes I sing and play my guitar for him. So he actually let us enter one of the enclosures. So we got like pretty close (laughs) to like a couple of these wolves, you know, and they're sleeping and we're tiptoeing in and thinking, I wonder if this is a really horrible idea right now. But I start playing what I'm hoping is going to be some sort of like lulling the wolves into, I don't know, more deep sleep. But actually they, as they like woke up slowly one by one, they start howling. And since it's like miles of property, all of a sudden you hear other wolves just all around sound, like just start joining in. And it was completely just chilling, enchanting experience because all of a sudden you're just in the middle of all of these wolves howling. And I'm like, oh my gosh. In that moment, you're like, this is a once in a lifetime like moment, (laughs) you know? So we just, we hung out there and I have tears in my eyes and I'm playing the violin and I'm thinking like, wow, it just felt like the wolves were talking with me and to me and to my violin. And it just felt like this very connective sort of expression where so much is being said and released and communicated with zero words, it's just music, animal music. I thought this is, this is awesome. So Fast forward, when we returned back to Alabama, coming back to that moment when I was writing the lyrics for this song, that's that feeling that I just wanted But in that state I was in. I was like, ah. So in the chorus, they say, you know, take me to West Cliff where the wolves sing their song. And that's where that birthed from, just snowballed into what is the wolf song. 
unbelievable. That sounds like a epic experience. I'd have, I'd have really been terrified to do that, but I think that's really cool <laughs> that you went, all right, let's go inside. Because I was thinking to myself, they let you in the cage. Okay. All right. They let you in. Right. The but then you also decided to go in. I mean, it's <laughs> right. right. I know looking, it's one of those moments when you look back, you go, was that very smart? <laughs> oh, we're just going to go with it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What a special experience. So yeah, yeah, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the song itself. I mean, Wolf Song and, and how that sort of how pal that palpable experience played into it. Yeah. So the lyrics come straight from a journal entry of mine because I write a ton. I think a lot of artists do this. You know, you, you journal your ins and outs, ups and downs or whatever. And, and you kind of come back to that when you're writing lyrics for songs. And I had actually started the lyrics for this song actually in a couple of different like sections of my life, we'll say time periods. And the, the wolf song kind of it was just tied together with that experience. So it's about, it's not necessarily just about like touring in Colorado and being there, but just the sentiment of, of wanting to make that connection and that freedom and just being like completely understood without having to say anything in that like that expansive just fast <laughs> thing so yeah um I think hopefully it captures that for some other people I tried to incorporate the violin I used the exact violin in the song, in the recording that I used when I visited the wolves. So you can hear that in um, a few places. And then just, yeah, trying to create that space for other people to, to have the feeling. I don't know if that answered the question or not. No, it perfectly <laughs> did. Um, so just working awesome. backwards a little bit too, I mean, how would you describe yourself as an artist? That's a really great and super hard question yeah. because, I feel, you know... <laughs> So many people say this, like, I don't know how to describe myself, but truly I'm a very large mix, you know, and it's, it's cool now that we get to play all these different things on our playlists, you know, on our iPods and stuff. But, uh, you know, when you and I were kids growing up, like we like had mixtapes and CDs, you know, you listen to an album all the way through and then you hop to another, but I still think even back then I was doing the mixtape listening, you know, where I'm like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, like some heavy metal here, some classical music there, some Inya, you know, Chris Teeley, whatever. So it's, it's influenced by a lot of different things. And I, when I set out to do it, I didn't have one specific genre in mind, but I'm told that it's kind of indie Americana, folk, bluegrass, rock and roll little, little bit of, uh, all kinds of things in there. Yeah. So yeah, a mix. <laughs> no, I, and I think that's so cool. I mean, it's also one of the reasons I ask it now, it's almost the cop-outs that I don't have to try to describe an artist, right? Cause I feel like I'm only going to box you in <laughs> somewhere anyway too, but it's also sure. because I do feel like we find ourselves in this kind of in this new period, if you will, of like music, a lot of ways too, especially yeah. with the rise of streaming. I mean, it's been around for a while now, but streaming, especially through the, the pandemic, of course, is obviously latched on. So it has, yeah. for those that weren't on board now, now they're pretty much all on board with this new, uh, you know, I guess you could yeah. consider just like a random way of listening to music. Uh, has that impacted the way that you write songs? And when you write music, do you just sit down and just see what comes out? Or do you sit down and with a feeling or do you sit down and go, I want to try to make this kind of song. I mean, what's your process like for, for writing music? My process varies from time to time because sometimes I'll start with the lyrics and other times I'll start with the music. And of course, you know, you want it to be from a place of the muse. Like we all want to sit down and just be like, Oh, the muse on my shoulder to mm, song. <laughs> but sometimes I'm just, I'm just sitting down and like jamming out a feeling, playing a completely different tune. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, you know, I've got an idea and you have to like, you just have to roll with it, you know, whether it's two in the morning or, you know, lunchtime. So I often use my phone, like the recorder app is gold. 
you can just like pick that up. And <laughs> there's some, I've been like dead asleep and, and dreamed a song and woke up and, you know, like recorded on my phone, like, la, 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 you know, and I, I was like, oh, that's going to be so good. And in the morning I go back and listen to it. <laughs> You're like, that's not all that great. But sometimes I do capture some really like meaningful to me ideas. So that's that lately I've been using that recorder app a whole lot. Yeah. So for, for a lot of your upcoming songs, is there anything, I mean, by the time this comes out, it'll actually ha- already be out. Cause I know I understand sure. you're releasing a lot more songs this week. Um, yes. But maybe you could tell some of maybe the stories that are involved in some of those songs uh, and, and some of the, the ways that those came to be. Sure. Well, there's a track on there called Lonely that I had started writing before the pandemic hit. I had like snippets of these these lyrics that I wanted to express, you know, we can be lonely in a crowded room. You know, you can walk in somewhere and there's all these people around, but you still feel lonely. And then there's the, you know, physical isolation where you're just obviously lonely like one in company someone to talk to you like and I had put these ideas together and sort of like singing some of the verse and a little bit of the chorus and then when the pandemic hit suddenly I, I actually just finished the whole song you know in one session I, I sat down and and it just it just kind of like flooded I was like okay this is this is totally this meaning. I'm feeling it. I've been talking to a lot of people who are feeling this and I wanted to express it. it gives people, you know, something to listen to and connect with. So you, when you hear it back, you can go, oh, I'm not alone. You know, <laughs> we, you know, even if we are technically alone, like physically isolated. So that, you know, that's one of the tunes that I'm excited to share with people because talking with friends and family and even strangers over the internet, Uh, everybody's going through just a whole entire rethink (laughs) about what what is important to us and how we spend our time and how we can spend our time so I'm excited for that one to come out that's a it's a it's a wonderful topic I think just in general uh but I think particularly now like you mentioned I mean, it's such a weird thing where I feel like we're in this technologically driven world, which in theory and and in practice too, has connected us with more people in more ways than ever before. But yet at the end of the day, especially when you find yourself in like quarantine isolation and otherwise, a lot of people I think are struggling with these feelings, right? And regardless of whether you're struggling with it or not, it's a feeling that we've all had, right? We've all felt lonely at some point in time. So it's, I think it's interesting that you explore that particularly now. Yeah, I I agree. I do. I agree. It's very, very interesting times for sure. Yeah. I hope we're getting out of it sometime soon. I know the the positivity is here. I think people are feeling maybe just springtime around here, but uh, uh, (laughs) I think I'm starting to feel it a little bit on my end, a little bit more of the optimism, but yeah, certainly it has been a strange and difficult time. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm looking for a sunrise. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. You got to hold out hope always. So, so yes. what, what else, do we, what other songs are there on, on the album? I, well, there's, a, <laughs> this is spread of songs that I wrote just last year. Like I was, you know, talking about lonely, but there's also a couple of songs on the album that I wrote when I was like, gosh, 15 years younger, like, you know, over a decade ago. So I've been, I've been writing songs for a really long time, but I just haven't sat down and taken the time to make a solo album. I've done some EP projects here and there, you know, released like three songs, five songs, but I haven't done the full length. So I'm really happy to give those songs wings because, you know, they've just been sitting with me for so long and I'm like, okay, go have your own life, go out there, be, (laughs) be with people now. And it also gives me you know, excitement to move on to even writing more stuff for a second album for sure. But one of those songs is uh, Edward. It's uh, next to the last track on the album. And it is, I think that it's the oldest song on the record. So I'm, I'm pumped for that one to come out. It's 
kind of a story song. It's it's about someone specific. But bonus, if you get the physical copy of the album and you read the lyrics, it has like a secret clue as to who the song is actually about. So anyway, there's that. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Intrigue. Yeah. <laughs> So what was it like making an album versus some of the EPs? I know this is actually something that's been on the minds of a lot of like modern musicians is, you know, dealing with putting out whether they should put out tons of different songs. I mean, obviously there's an impetus now to put out as much content as possible. Do they still need to put in an album? How do they design an album? What was it like for you uh, in, in doing your first album? That's a great question. And I would say, first off, if your resources allow you to make the full thing where, you know, say you've got all the material, you've already got the songs written and, you know, you've got the studio time, whether it's at your home or, you know, you've got the finances to pay for an actual studio. I would say, go for it, do the whole thing. Cause there's a lot of people, including me that love to sit down and hear a complete project, you know, and just, I think that there's something beautiful about releasing like just this, this whole entire like baby project all at the same time. And then you, once you're, you're into the recording process, you sort of, you have this like mojo, this energy, you know? So I, I was getting up every day around the same time, you know, hitting the studio. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do all the guitar parts, you know, all the piano, all the vocals, all the violin, you know? So I, I kind of took it in chunks like that. And I think if you've got that momentum already, you know, why not just go ahead and, and do the full album and, you know, make a, a cohesive project out of it. So I think I did release a single once before, and that was a lot of fun too. But I didn't really have the time to, uh, you know, put into the album at, at that particular juncture. So now, or junction. <laughs> so now I'm excited for the, the full thing. I don't know, you know, it, every artist is individual for sure, but that's my two cents. Yeah, I love it. And it sounds like it, it was a particularly stimulating and important experience for you too, which is awesome. I think if it can give you the energy, especially in your case, to not only you know, wake up every day and, and go for it and actually put it all into one album, but also bring to life some old songs. Sounds like a particularly interesting um, album, almost like a life compilation album already. <laughs> yeah. Life compilation up yeah. to now. There we go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> so who are some of your inspirations that you drew from, if anyone uh, on this album? Gosh, so many. I, I'll give a shout out to my family because my, my family, they're all musicians and they really helped just generate the love that I have for music. I'm very appreciative uh, for, you know, my mom and dad and brother. And um, aside from that, I have a bunch of different types of inspiration. Like we were talking about earlier, you know, just <laughs> here's some metal, here's some Inya, here's blah, blah, blah. But I really love anything that Chris Thiele does. I just, I thought, fell in love with the Goat Rodeo Project, the Punch Brothers and Nickel Creek. Oh my goodness, such a good, such a good group. And then I really like singer songwriters, storytellers, James Taylor, Bob Dylan, Willie Nelson, Gordon Lightfoot. And then also at the same time, I really love kind of people who put like experimental stuff on the table, like Imogen Heap and Regina Spector. And hmm, gosh, so many. Oh, I love the postal service too. Yeah. I don't think any of my stuff sounds like anything that I'm mentioning, but all the things that I'm talking about just kind of excite me, you know, when you listen to them, you're like, yes. Ah, ah, ah. So I hope that part of the record or all of the record does that for, for somebody out there that would make my heart happy. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good note on inspiration in general. I feel like, I mean, it, it doesn't always have to mean that it's like similar to something that maybe inspired you, but it, I like the fact that you're thinking about it, even in terms of I was inspired by the feeling that I got when I listened to, you know, say the postal service, et cetera. Yes. Yeah. That's what I want to do. I want to pay it forward. That's all. That's what it's about. Just pay that feeling forward. <laughs> I love it. 
So what's, co- what's next for you? What's coming up for you? What should people be looking forward to? I know obviously this week is a big week for you, but um, yes. what else is there going on? <laughs> I am doing a podcast. So I have two episodes that come out each month and that's just little short strategy episodes on how to be more resilient with our day-to-day life. You know, the ups and downs, the yin and yang, the head and tail. That's what it's called, the head and tail podcast. So you can check that out if you're into being more resilient. And right now I'm doing a lot of live streams. So I've been doing Tuesday night live streams, which is a lot of fun. And I'm, if, if you want to be a part of any of my projects in any way, then you can join my wolf pack, which is my email list and everybody who is, you know, coming to the live streams and they're just, they're all in my wolf pack, wonderful humans shout out to any wolf pack people out there listening or watching. <laughs> I love it. We'll get them, get them howling the wolf pack. I love it. Ooh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Well, thanks, Melody. This was really fun. It was nice to dive more into, especially the wolf song stories and and some of your background. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, your podcast is really cool. I was listening to it earlier. And yeah, I'm just excited to be a part. Oh, thanks. Thanks for taking your time. Yeah. Yeah, of course. No, it's really, uh, it's been really fun. I mean, for me, it's just, it's just cool uh, to, to, to draw inspiration from artists, right? Like I, yeah. I love what, it, what an interest. I mean, I, I find your story to be such an interesting one. Um, you know, and it's just fascinating to hear it. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was, it was very like humbling experience to get, to get to live it. So again, pay it forward, hoping, <laughs> yeah. hoping the song gives it to others out there. And I like your intentionality with that too. I mean, I think it's, um, I think it's, 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 especially with something as like emotional almost as music, like essentially it's an exchange of feeling in a lot of way. Right. And so yeah. for you to think about it in that sense of like, okay, I want to pay this, these feelings forward or these experiences forward. I think it's particularly, uh, just a particularly cool way of thinking about your music as sort of like a gift to other people in, in, in sharing these feelings and emotions and stories with others. Oh, that, that would make me so happy to, to know that, that, you know, it is pass forward. That's really honestly what I want to do with, with everything that I'm, you know, engaging in with like the podcast and the music to, you know, just pay it forward and, and, and spread more light and more love, hopefully. (laughs) Yeah. We could all use as much of that as we can get. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Well, cool. And I wanted to ask you while I have you too. Um, When would you like this to kind of come out? We have a, I, I, you know, as far as the schedule goes, I was going to slot you in sometime in actually it's like mid April. Like it looks like 19th range. Is that okay? Or would you prefer another time? Is there like a better date or something else? I always like to try to ask because I can move some things around too. Oh, you're amazing. Thank you so much. I think, gosh, I will, I'll totally leave that up to you. Cause okay. I think I'll, I'll just trust. Yeah. Trust your judgment and whatever you've got slotted in there. And, um, you know, I don't know, Krista might have an opinion, but I I'm cool. Yeah. I asked her too, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure I asked you as well. <laughs> oh, you're awesome. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you so much. I'm just excited to be a part of the show for sure. Yeah, no, I, yeah. When, when I heard about you, I thought it was fascinating. Um, I, I actually, so I grew up playing violin myself and I always thought no of it as, way. yeah, it's interesting. Like, I, I mean, I, I haven't played in forever. Unfortunately, my violin actually broke. I had a really old one and oh I took goodness. it out and I played, it was trying to play it. Like this was like five years ago and yeah. it, I, it just fell apart in my hands. It was almost like comical. Oh uh, I think it was oh just like, gosh. actually, so it's still all workable, but I think it was actually such an old violin that the glue and probably it maybe had gotten a little bit too hot or something in, in the storage unit that it was in. Cause I hadn't sure. played it that long, but the glue, yeah. so it's still all fine because it's oh, all good. like, obviously the bridge came off as did the, so it, it, it kind of disconnected from the body and, and the oh, whole goodness. part sort of fell off and I'm holding it and it just went and I caught it all. So I still have it all, but I haven't repaired it yet, but I just love the violin. Uh, I've oh, always loved great. it. I think it's beautiful. Although I always say it's the worst instrument to learn especially for other people in your house. But once you've mastered it, right. everybody loves it, right? It's such a touching, right. beautiful instrument, so. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah, it's a, a, it can be a sharp learning curve there. 
Yeah. I'm I'm glad you kept all the pieces though. Cause you know, that could actually, it might be like worth something to pass down and everything, keep in your family. Like that's cool. Yeah. No, I definitely yeah. have to, I still have actually, I'm glad we talked about it. Cause I need to salvage that thing. Um, yeah. it's, I still have it. I just haven't gotten it repaired. I'm sure I could get it repaired and make it, make it worth something. And honestly, I'd just like to pick oh, it up yeah. and play it again. Although yes. it's always so sad, like how bad you are if you've taken that much time off. <laughs> but we'll see. I can still read the notes you're, and stuff. So <laughs> that's right. Just crank up some really loud music while you're playing along with it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I really credit, at least for me, I credit violin as actually sort of helping me not be um, nervous in front of people, particularly to do something stupid, because awesome. I don't know how it was for you, but when I grew up playing violin, my teacher First of all, it was a hard ass. But second of all, <laughs> at once it was twice a year, I think it was, I had to perform in front of a congregation of all of her students and all of her students' parents. So she oh, put on yeah. these like live concerts and I oh, was yeah. not that good. Like I really was, <laughs> I should not have been performing for anybody. And yet I had to get up there like everybody else. Like, and I started at five. So like five-year-old me is up there like oh. trying to play the violin in front of all these people. And it just taught me like, it was the worst thing I ever had to do, but it really did make me not as nervous, especially in public settings. Cause once you've gone through that embarrassment, you could do yeah. it. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I love this story. I love that the violin has this connection to the, like this positive, amazing thing in your life. Like, cause you're, you're like out here putting content for the world and th- like you are making a world stage. Like that's amazing. Yeah. I love, no, it's, it's, I love- it's so weird. Like it, it's so weird to think about too, like, it, it, but the violin was really like an important instrument. I mean, like, yeah. I also just think it's, it's, it's quite a unique one. It's also one that I think is just kind of like slept on these days. Cause it's not as like cool maybe. Um, yeah. and certainly I wish that I had taken it even more seriously than I did as a kid. Cause for me, it was kind of a weird relationship with it where I really enjoyed doing it. But then like, I went through a period where I was like, I don't really want to do this. It's not that cool. And I picked up guitar instead, like a lot of people I think do. And I was like, which I like the guitar too, but it was just kind of like this weird thing where I like battled with the instrument, but it still is one of my favorites just as like a, it goes back. (laughs) (laughs) You've got roots, you've got connections. And I think again, like, I think it's such an emotional instrument, like, like what you showed with the wolf song as well, or, or the inspiration to the wolf song. It's like, it, has that kind of power. I think very few instruments have that kind of power. That's cool. That's so cool. I love it. I was reading an article that said the cello is the closest thing to the human voice. And then the violin is second because of the, like you can slide. Ah, Yeah. I always thought the violin was, would be number one. That's interesting. So cello is number one, I guess, because it goes deeper. Only because of the range. Uh, Yeah. Only mm because of the, because you you know, our voices don't go quite as high. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the I guess the violin, cello, viola, that whole family—that's the closest thing to the human voice. Just because it's pretty cool. It makes it because it also helped me a lot in singing. Because like later down Ooh, the line, yeah. I was never like a trained vocalist, but when I learned violin, I almost became one because I didn't realize it. Yeah. But I don't know how it was for you either. But I did Suzuki Method, which was every time you played something, it was like you're basically learning how it sounds. And then often yeah. even singing it back and then trying to play yes. it. Yes, right. So it was a very non-technical way of approaching music theory. And it actually trained my me as a vocalist as well. Um, so cool. Which was just such a cool, I, and, and I think that was also because just the way that you can hear pitch from a violin, it's so acute. Yeah. Because you don't have the frets, yes. you don't have the buttons. So you really have to feel how these, yeah. these sounds, you have to know how it sounds. You can't just yeah. trust that it's going to be right. Right. Oh, it's so true. Yeah. Nailed it. Exactly. So I think a lot of violinists like you have like the sharp, have almost sharper, like more acute listening, especially on like, especially in the range of the violin, but it it, it adds to the acuity with which you actually listen to music, uh, especially melodically, I think. So cool. So cool. I love it. I love that you've got this connection to it. That's very, very cool. Yeah. Well, I just, I just love the instrument always have. And I, and I, I think it's really cool. It just, it's, it's cool. It's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful instrument. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful every time I get to play it. I love, I do love it very much. Yeah. Well, it's clear. I mean, and, and what's fun too, is I, I, I've really liked your range as an artist. Like it's very, it's very interesting, at least from what I've heard too. I still have much, much more of yours to listen to. Certainly looking forward to uh, the album as well. 
Uh, oh, but yeah, you. no, it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's, what's interesting is I, I've been looking at this more generally as well, but it's just so cool to me, like how I think a lot of musicians too are almost like genre bending more and more these days where yeah. it's sort of like hard to put them even in a box, not that you need to or should, but it's just interesting of like, what kind of music even is this? Cause you can touch on so many different things. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. Little this, little that, little this, yeah. new flavors. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's exciting. I think that's, that's the way that music will move forward is almost like almost yeah. post genre where, you know, I think it has to do with how people are listening to things. I have, I think it has to do with how many inspirations artists have these days. Cause another factor yeah. of it is not just that audiences can listen to streaming, but also that artists are growing up with streamability. Yes, so like even us, huge. we grew up with the MP3 players and like the iPod when that came out, but like, <laughs> And we still were so heavily CD driven in the beginning. And oh, so yeah. we didn't even get all the time with it. But imagine from day one, you could access any song. Anything. Yeah. Just absolutely anything. Yeah. It's incredible. Totally yeah. incredible. And then you add that on top of the fact that it's like almost more democratized to have your music out there. Like when you have like SoundClouds and, and you have Bandcamp, yeah. you people can experiment in ways that are just like crazy. Uh, I think. Oh, for is, sure. So we're seeing all the impacts of that. It's going to be fascinating. To yeah. See oh yeah. I mean, just got like 50 years ago, you know, like a 14 year old kid isn't, you know, able to get their music heard globally from their basement where, you know, <laughs> but now it's, you know, you record something five minutes later, it's, it's viral, whatever. Yeah. It's amazing. And I love the feeling that virality, it's whether or not it's hundred percent true is always negotiable or arguable, but I feel like virality at least feels like authentic because it feels like it's just sort of happened to this random person. Cool. Whereas, yeah. you know, like when you have like major artists, if you're, if you're breaking them on the radio, it feels like they've already right. gotten the backing. It's not that it's a problem or a bad thing. It just no. feels like it's less like, ah, uh, this, it's not like some random kid in their house, whereas it legitimately feels like some of these people that pop up are just you know, they've always yeah. been artists maybe, but it's like almost their break was random where you can't even play. Yeah. It just happened. That is fun. I do love those stories. <laughs> yeah. 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 Very cool. Very cool to see it. Yeah. Cause it's the people speaking. It's not just like, oh, we listen to whatever's on the radio. It's like, no, I, I get to choose what I listen to like from a million different platforms. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I think also to, to your point earlier, also on, on like, you know, actually putting out albums. I think one of the reasons that it is so important is because I really do think that people nowadays really need to latch on to you as a person. Like, I think, cool. first of all, I think they take genuine interest in you, like as an artist, like in genuine interest in who the actual creator is uh, as a reason to listen to you versus maybe other things or other people. And B, right, I just think yeah. it makes the experience of listening to your music so much more fun when you actually add yeah. this dynamic of like, okay, you like you have a wolf pack. That is so cool, right? Like people get to be part of something bigger than themselves. I think any and every way that they can do that is important. And I think that one of the ways that you do that as an artist is by reaching out to your fans, like the way you have and saying, okay, you know, this is the, this is the stories that I'm telling. These are the feelings that I'm putting out into the world. Like, and here, here's some nuggets and extra things for you for being part of the pack as well. I think that just people love that stuff. Oh, awesome. I love it. Yeah. So great stuff. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome to see it. And uh, I'm excited to hear even more from you moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yeah, again, thank you for having me on your show. This is super, super cool.